Welcome to the Feel Good Weddings podcast by Polkadot Wedding. While Polkadot Wedding was born out of my obsession around weddings, it has become so much more. While there's dresses and fashion and pretty things and cakes and flowers and venues and all the things that we love and talk about with weddings, there is at the core of it a business. And the business that has broken every part of me and built me back up over the last 15 years and not without a lot of help. There have been so many coaches and mentors and educators and amazing people that have been a part of that. And there have been amazing wedding pros that I learn from and am inspired by each and every day. So we wanted to drop in a few episodes through the Feel Good Weddings podcast that explored just that. We wanted to talk about the difficulties that come with running your own business. We wanted to talk about how do we can improve our businesses. We wanted to talk about things like diversity and inclusion and aligning a business to your own values. We wanted to have the tricky discussions and we can't wait to get started. The Polka Dot Wedding Team is honoured to conduct our work on the land of the Boom Warung, Woyai Warung, Eora and Karangai people. We honour the traditional Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander custodians of the land and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. Hello and welcome. I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest today. His name is Joel Malo and he's a Sydney-based wedding photographer that we've been working with at Polka Dot Wedding since 2017. Joel has this beautiful moodiness to his work. He ha- captures moments really candidly and he does that off building a really great connection with his couples. So today we're diving into everything business with Joel, from how he builds that connection and to what makes him tick. We're really excited for this one. I can't wait for you to listen. Hello, Joel. Thank you so much for joining me today. That's a pleasure. I am so excited to chat to you today about your work as a wedding photographer and your business, but I want to get started with a little about you. So you're a dad, a husband, and a photographer. So tell us about yourself. Who is Joel Malo? <laughs> Big question. Yes, it is true. I'm, I'm a dad. I have two sort of smallish but still biggish kids, uh, five and <laughs> five and seven. Ava's seven, and Ava's obviously... Uh, the namesake of the, the whole enterprise, and Jacob is is five, and yeah, I'm also been married for about well almost ten years now. So yeah, that's that's me personally. I, I don't know, should I mention my age? <laughs> well, it's up to you. Maybe <laughs> you know who yeah, would I'm, like to tell their age nowadays. Yeah. No, not not many. I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm not I'm not too young, but I'm also not too old. I guess I'll just I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the mystery, keep the mystery. Now, you got started with wedding photography, from my understanding, is from photographing your daughter and putting those pictures up on Facebook. Is that what led you into capturing weddings every weekend? Yes, yes. So I tell this story a lot, I mean, to almost all my couples, but uh, I did start um, photographing my daughter when she was a newborn. That's how really I started uh, because before she was born, I, I had this shiny brand new camera that I used. Um, I actually didn't know how to use it. I was just, uh, you know, just just shooting and just, you know, playing around really. I wasn't, I wasn't taking it too seriously. And then when my daughter arrived, I guess I started taking some, some decent pics because, you know, people started noticing on Facebook and people were like, oh, that's, that's so nice. And um, I mean, you know, I guess they, they, they were pretty good. And, but what happened was as I progressed through that, those first few months of my daughter's life, I, I, was, I was starting to learn, you know, how to shoot. And I started looking at other photographers and, you know, naturally, you know, you look at family photographers, but then you sort of start looking at wedding photographers. You're like, oh, that's that's nice. You know, they start popping up in your feed, and then that that's how the, I guess you start getting a taste of what wedding photography is, and that was how it all started. So, what? Tell me about your first wedding booking. So, my first wedding booking was actually my my cousin's wedding. So he he obviously noticed uh, my daughter's photos on Facebook, and also of course, you know, through through other other you know sharing uh, platforms, and he. He asked me to do, you know, what do you think about photographing my wedding? And I thought, oh, you know, what the hell? Let's let's do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you you, you sort of don't you think you think you're you're invincible and you you, um, <laughs> you, 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 know, you ta- you'll take it on. It, it wasn't actually a, a very great experience, to be honest. His wedding probably a bit of a, you know, it just dragged me back to earth, really, uh, in terms of you know, I thought it was going to be yeah. awesome, but it was actually full of full of a lot of pain. Um, oh God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was that was my very first wedding, my, my cousin's wedding. A lot of those photos I forget now. I still have the gallery, but I I look through and I cringe at every photo. There might be just one or two that I think are worthy of putting on a wall, but the rest is probably yeah. I just I just sort of keep it on the low. 
Which is funny though, because I feel like I we've worked with you at Polka Dot Wedding since 2017. I looked it up today, and your style has made, remained really, really consistent for us. Well, what I've seen, and opposed to often, I'll find a, a, someone who will start out their style will change as the wind blows and it will, you know, as they see new things or they obviously get more experience, they, they change and you can't recognise their work from beginning to end, whereas yours has been really consistent. So how did you find that style then and how did you stick with it? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess my, in terms of my style, I've, I've always, um, you know, been attracted to the, to the vibrant and the colourful and the bright stuff. You know, that's not to say that I don't, I don't indulge in, in some of the more moody and some of the, you know, some of the other stuff that, that goes around, you know, that catches your eye every so often. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, you just naturally come back to what you were, you know, what I was sort of, you know, the style I was doing before. And, uh, you know, that's that's what's happened with, I think, with my wedding career. You know, people say, oh, I should try this, try that. And I do try it. But then I, I seem to think, oh, no, I think I'll just go back to, you know, like, you know, what I was doing before because I, I like that. Yeah. And obviously clients, clients like that too. And yeah. You know, but that's yeah. Again, it's not to say I don't experiment. I definitely do experiment every so often with, with certain weddings, and some yeah. weddings do um, provide opportunities to experiment. But yeah, in the main, I, I sort of stick to what I what I've always liked, which is just just this nice and bright and airy, airy sort of style. Yeah. You know, and I still I still photograph my kids today, and that sort of hasn't really changed the way I photograph them. So I guess that mm-hmm. also carries over into my into my weddings is that. You know, the way I photograph my family is, is still the same way as, you know, when I first started. Yeah. And I think part of your strength as a photographer and part of what you pride yourself on is that relationship and that bond you create with your clients. And that I know obviously helps people relax. So how does that relationship start with you as a photographer and as a, I suppose, before you even take the photographs? Uh, look, obviously, we, we always catch up before a wedding. These days, it's, it's more often by Zoom, which is which is a little bit more, more difficult. But, you know, there, there are occasions nowadays where you still catch up uh, in person. I, I have a home office, which is here, that I meet people at. And it's always good to have people in the door. But it's a rare thing nowadays. And a lot of the times, it's now, you know, just like this. It's, you know, remotely through Zoom or through phone mm-hmm. calls. Yeah, making the connection is just a little bit, a little bit more harder, a little bit more difficult. But, but you know, you're still... You know, we're still talking and you're still, yeah. you know, engaging with people. And, and that's that's always the first step is that um, that first meeting, always trying to make the right impression and be as personable as, as possible, Yeah, which, which I hope I am. <laughs> I think, yeah, most people, they know I'm a sort of candid and relaxed guy and that's that's the sort of air I try to give off, you know, during my meetings. I, I, don't, I don't sort of, you know, there's no, there's no pressure tactics or anything. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. a nice casual chat about, about their wedding day. And that, that's really, yeah, that's how we get off on the, that's how we start. So that's how you start. How do you continue? How do you strengthen that relationship and continue it with your correspondence throughout that time with the couple? Is there tips and tricks you can give aspiring photographers to build that connection with their couples? Uh, look, yeah, you know, besides continuing the conversation, you know, you're always trying to touch base uh, with clients, you know, and if they do touch base with you, just to you know, give them as much information as possible. You know, I do have loads of information on my website to sort of give, you know, give my couples, you know, to guide them on their wedding journey. And then there's there's actual, you know, other things such as, you know, pre-wedding shoots that you do. And they, they're probably the most important ones because the pre-wedding shoot really help couples see how you work, yeah. get to know you a bit more, you know, and just see that dynamic of, of you know, a couple photographer and how it's going to work on their wedding day. And it's always great to sort of also get a set of images as well from that from that session. Yeah. So yeah, that, those are the sort of the two things I think that that sort of continue keeping that bond, to, you know, up uh, in the lead up to the wedding. So do you find the engagement shoot really integral to that process of getting to know them and building that relationship with them? Yeah, I do. I definitely do, and I think it's probably the best thing you could do if you yeah if you do end up getting married and choosing a photographer that that the engagement session is is probably the most most crucial thing to do if you could do it. Yeah, definitely. So. Obviously, it's really important that every couple feels almost the most important couple that you're working with, even though you won't be working with many and you have a family. How do you manage dealing with that with so many couples, trying to make them all feel really awesome and important when you're trying to juggle so many things as a small business owner? That's a tough question. It is, it is hard to juggle all those things. Look, obviously, you know, responding as, as quick as I can to all, all communications and, and just trying to also deliver as, as quick as I can as well sometimes is, is helpful. Yep. 
And, you know, obviously on the wedding day, you know, it's it's almost a given that, that you, you, you're treating them as, as the number one priority. Yeah. But, yeah, that, those are, I guess I'm always trying to, yeah, it's, it's always tough juggling the family and, and the weddings um, and especially <laughs> Probably this year is probably the, the hardest it's, it's ever been. But uh, Have you seen your family much this year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good question. On the weekends, not so much, no. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit of – but, but again, it was, yeah, the previous two years haven't had that much weddings. I've actually been home quite a lot, you know, 2020, yeah. 21. Yeah. And, and I sort of knew 2022 was going to come and it was going to hit like a wave and, and it has hit like a, like a massive tidal wave. Uh, yeah. So I, I, ha- look, I obviously haven't been around too much, um, but <laughs> – but, you know, during the week I'm around. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the wedding day, I know we all know the time after the ceremony or the time before the ceremony, depending on what you're doing with the photographs, is really important to find that space. But it's often also a day where the nerves are frayed, the anticipation is high, the adrenaline is pumping. How do you break that down and find the space to capture those really beautiful, candid moments that you're so good at doing? Trying to take charge of things is, is important, you know. Um, when, when there's a bit of chaos going on in, in a wedding day, just trying to make sure everyone is is not just causing chaos and keeping everyone sort of yeah on track uh, as well. I'm not. I mean, I don't. I don't sort of direct everyone, but I do try and make sure that that things are in are in some sort of order so that you know people people know what they're doing. Yeah. Rather than just just you know helter skelter, and and I'm always trying to pull the bride, you know, and groom um, away from the crowds if I can, you know, as as much as I can. And it's always important to sort of have a bit of peace and quiet um, for everyone involved. Yeah. Have you ever had clients that aren't a good fit for you that you've had to say no to? How do you handle that? I don't think I've had too many. I don't think I've had too many clients who have said, I, don't, I can't remember now. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever said no. <laughs> I think I've always said <laughs> Well, that's said, a good thing. I, I think I've always said yes uh, uh, because I guess everyone's different. Everyone's different. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone, everyone comes, comes to me and, and they already know uh, a bit about what, how I am already, uh, which is a good thing. I don't get too many cold clients who will who I have to sort of sit there and convince too much. Um, <laughs> but but there have been. So I can't I can't really think of too many clients I've actually said no to. You know, yeah, it's it's a real head scratcher. That one. Like even even when I was reading that question, I couldn't think of it. You know, I said no to. I don't think I've said no to many. I mean, you might not. I know there are photographers that have very distinct visions about the clients they want to work with, and ones that might just not be a good fit. And hey, maybe the people that are coming to you are always a good fit. Maybe that's just all there is to it. That's that's probably it. That's probably it. And I and I do know, um, yeah, most most people who do come to me, they they've already known me from somewhere else, or, or they've seen yeah. my work somehow, and they've you know they, they sort of have a gist of what's going on. So I haven't had too many, yeah, too many far out clients who haven't fit what I thought I am. Well, that's that's actually a really good thing, I think. What is your favourite tech for keeping on top of client contact or do you just do it all through the magic of email and, and a brain that holds it all? Uh, yep, the magic of email. Uh, there is no favourite tech. You know, that I wish I wish I could have a virtual assistant. Uh, that would be nice. I wish I could have an assistant full stop, really, uh, but I, I, I don't. Most of my communication has, has occurred on email and that's that's what I do. Like Zoom, Zoom how do you actually, manage your clients day to day? Like how do you keep on top of everything that you've got to do with them? Don't tell me that's in your head. <laughs> no, 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 no. I still, I, I use, I use a tool. Uh, there is a tool, Studio Ninja. That's that's my like studio tool awesome. um, that I use to manage clients. And I think, I think it's a very popular tool that a lot of photographers use. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's probably been a lifesaver to be honest. Because I was using, I think I was using spreadsheets at the start, and that was like yeah. a nightmare. Uh, I think, I think everyone agrees that spreadsheets generally is a nightmare. So, um, luckily, I, I dumped those fairly soon and, and moved into an, uh, a system like Studio Ninja, and that that sort of keeps me on top of. Of, of a lot of things and across a lot of yeah. things and, yeah. it, and it helps me automate some of the things I do. Um, so I guess if there's one thing that you could say, I think Student Ninja is, is the one. Oh, well, that, that's a that's a raving review. How did you keep yourself going as a business during COVID when you weren't, you said you were sort of shut down and not doing any weddings? Uh, yeah, COVID was a funny period. I actually slowed down. I almost, I almost became a recluse um, in, <laughs> on the wedding scene. I actually sort of pulled back um, because in the previous in, in the lead up to COVID, the previous you know four years or so, I think I was working incredibly hard, you yeah. know, trying to push push A and me. And with COVID, I sort of took a bit of a step back. I, I you know, I, I I did still post. I still just tried to stay on top of a lot of things, but but you know, a lot of it did slow down. And I had a chance to sort of look back on a lot of my weddings. 
as well because you know sometimes during the wedding season you don't even have time to, to even yeah look, look at some of the galleries you deliver you, you just you know and I did have a lot of time to yeah look back on a lot of the, the photos there was a lot of retrospection and I did still you know I did still run some some campaigns some marketing campaigns during those 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 few months but I but I also took a bit of a step back as well what did you come to the conclusion of as you were spending all that quiet time reflecting which I think it was a good thing by the sound of it that you did it uh look I reflected look I definitely thought thought, thought maybe maybe I should I should step away uh, <laughs> uh that, that I think that most people in the industry will have thought that at some point though it was a yeah, hard period I, it was a hard period yeah it was you know you, you spend so much time at home and then you I think I think it's been the most time I spent with the family as well so what happened was there was a couple of weddings there were a few um, the weddings that did happen, they were great. Um, they were amazing. Obviously, COVID imposed a few restrictions on some of those weddings. But, you know, I guess because the weddings weren't as often and they were a bit far, further apart, you know, when I did show up to them, I, I sort of, you know, appreciated the, I appreciated them a bit more. And it sort of made me just think, oh, this, this, is, this is not too bad, you know. Like if I could just uh, come out and continue this, this would, be, this would still be good. But, yeah, obviously, yeah, the, 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 this year has been a bit crazy. But, um yeah, and obviously I did. I did still say I was. I did still continue on with weddings, which is yeah, which is what I yeah end up end up going through. But uh, yeah. Well, we're pretty happy that you've continued on. Is that what drives you? You've said that the love stories are what you love the most about weddings. Is that what drives you to continue? It is actually. It's it's funny um, listening to all those being with couples and, and just just hearing about their stories. You know, during ceremonies and during speeches, it's an awesome thing to hear. You mm. know how a couple met and you know how their relationship developed. And uh, sometimes even I can be on the floor sort of tearing up as well. And, yeah, it, it's, it's just lovely to hear those sorts of stories as well because it, it's, yeah, weddings are, are a magical thing. They're a wonderful thing. Mm. And, um, you know, you sort of think, think back about your own wedding as well and about your own, your own uh, yeah, partner. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, what's, that's what's the thing that drives me to keep going. So you stripped it all back and you thought, mm, maybe I might go, maybe I might not. Have you implemented any changes since the pandemic? Has it shaken things up in how you're going to run your business? Look, it has shaken things up. Now, obviously, yeah, I have, I, I'm not as, I guess I'm not as, I'm not as helter skelter. I'm not as, uh, I think, I think before I was, I was running at, at, you know, 110%, you know, 120%, you know, yeah, a thousand miles an hour. I think this year, even though I do have a lot, you know, a lot on the plate, it's still, a little bit more relaxed, you know, not not as not as stressed out as I was uh, in previous years. So I guess I've taken a bit of a step back and slowed down my workflow a bit. Well, that's that's pretty epic. That's a pretty good outcome. How do you slow down your workflow in weddings? <laughs> I know it's a bit of it's a bit of a weird one uh, to say, uh, but I have I have slowed down. Uh, but I'm still look. I'm still I'm still pretty pretty good with weddings. I think I even I've even taken on videography. You know, as well, which is which is even more crazy. Yeah, I was um, about to say, hey, that's not slowing down. <laughs> no, that's not slowing down. Um, but but you know, I've got processes in place to sort of uh, ensure they're they're pretty smooth. But yeah, the yeah, you know, on the main, on the whole, generally, I, I haven't I haven't gone as as fast, or at least I don't think so. Anyway, at least I, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm slowing down. Maybe I'm still going at, at that fast, but but my brain is slowed down. Are you taking on less weddings moving forward? Because it sounds like you were really busy as well prior to pandemic. Yes, I was definitely very busy prior to the pandemic and, you know, I knew this year was going to be a bit crazy. So, you know, I sort of let that go and, and say, look, you know, this might be a one-off. And next year, next year, even though it's still busy, it's probably not going to be as, as busy as, as this year or even if, even the previous year before the pandemic. So I think 2023 is shaping up to be a lot, lot, more, lot more peaceful, <laughs> you know, and a lot more calmer. And I'm just aiming, I am aiming to, to not do so much. I think, I think that's a... I feel like everyone needs to come out of the pandemic feeling that we don't need to be so hustle hustle centric. Yeah, that's right. I, I definitely don't want to be hustle centric, and uh, that's probably what what I was doing before pandemic. And yeah. now now it's a bit like uh, I can I can afford to let that go. What do you wish that you knew before you started in the wedding industry? What would you have told Joel seven years ago? Joel seven years ago, I would have said, uh, "Get yeah yeah, buckle in." <laughs> I think Joel, Joel, seven years ago, was quite naive about the wedding industry, and uh, yeah, thinking that uh, you know it would just it would just run itself. To be honest, wedding being in the wedding industry, you just yeah, you, you, we we still have to hustle actually every day. 
Yeah. To get clients, yeah, clients don't just walk through the door. You you have to hustle for them. Yeah. You know? It's it's not something that's that you just sit back and say, oh, they'll come to me. They'll, they'll never come to you. You have to be out there all the time to get them. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you won't get any really. And uh, yeah, that's probably the, the probably the key advice I'd give myself younger Joel is that get ready for the hustle. Because yeah. you'll be you'll be working more on the hustle than anything else in front of the camera, and even developing the photos is 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 the easy part. The, the hustle is the hard part. And I think that's the difficulty that people who start their own business are probably naive about is that it's a it's not doing what the core of what you think you'll be doing. In your case, you'd think you'd be shooting all the time, and nothing else and everything else would sort of fade away. Whereas actually, there's admin and clients and all that stuff. But on top of that. Like you have to find that balance between not hustling, but then also hustling because who else is going to hustle if it's not you? So, it, have you struck the balance? Uh, now, I hope so. Post pandemic, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I, I really do hope so. I mean, I, I have to anyway uh, because I think before I was a bit unhealthy and, and I was just focusing a lot on, on the hustle and, and just trying to yeah you know, get as get as many people through the door as possible. Yeah, and this year. Yeah, you know, the focus is less on, on trying to get as many people as I can as, as to more, you know, as more, not more, but less, I guess, less at a more, you know, relaxed pace. Yeah. Do you have any advice for running a wedding business in Australia as a wedding photographer? Well, as yourself being a wedding photographer. But my only advice other than the one I've just given myself about, about it, focusing on, on getting people is, is um, look, it's, it's, uh, it's hard work. It's definitely hard work. Not like you know, it's not an easy thing to do. You know, it's easy to take a photo and easy to develop mm-hmm. some photos, but but you know, actually running a business is always going to be a, a hard thing. You know, it's just like any other job is that you got. Yeah, but there's a lot of peripheral things you need to to focus on rather than just you, you know your core photography work. It's you know, there's a lot of uh, yeah administration and, and marketing and um, you know, there's people skills as well that you need to work on. I think um, you know some photographers you know, may not have that that either but uh yeah there's this there's, there's, there's a lot other than photography that that you need to focus on when you when you start a, a wedding photography business and uh you know it's not all it's not all glitz and glamour which is what what some people might might think when they look at our, our portfolios i mean we, we do put out that sort of vibe but to be honest that's a lot of hard work goes into creating that vibe a hundred percent so what is next for you and and joel mailer photography and ava me and uh, surviving the year. <laughs> <laughs> do you have another big season coming up in October? I, I do. Yes, I do. Definitely October, September, October. Uh, will be will be nuts. Uh, will be bonkers. But I think you know once once that sort of subsides and um, you know I think the year, people will sort of get back to a bit of normality. Um, I think we'll finally yeah. be back into normality by next year, and and that will you know hopefully um, you know bring me a bit more peace, peace, peace and quiet. Um, <laughs> I'm still going to enjoy. I still enjoy every wedding, you know, each and every one of them. Uh, even though sometimes it, it can be it can get quite hectic. So yeah, I I plan on continuing um, doing the videography thing. Although it's it's kind of yeah, it's kind of uh, throwing up some new challenges itself as well, <laughs> dealing with videography. But yeah, I, I still think it's it's also a good thing. Well, I hope you survive October and the rest of the year, and <laughs> I hope that you continue by the like. Uh, you've always, it's always been so evident that you love what you do and you have such a great connection with your clients and I really hope that it continues for you because it sounds like it's still there, which is the most important thing. It, it is, yeah, and, I, and I do, yeah. There was a bit of retrospection and, and, and thinking during the, the pandemic, but uh, look, I still I still love doing it. And whenever I show up to a wedding, it just, it just keeps, I, I keep saying, yep, this, this is great, this is awesome. That's perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a joy to talk to you after so long. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed getting to know Joel as much as I did. If you would like a written transcript of today's episode or to find out more information about Joel, head on over to polka.wedding.com forward slash podcast. We've got this old link to there. If you are a wedding vendor, can I just say we would love to have you as a part of our membership. We believe in couples finding vendors that suit them, not us. So we're not invitation only. We don't think it's very inclusive, to be honest. So we'd love to have you as part of something that's so much more than advertising. It's content marketing, it's community, and it's information and inspiration. We'd love for you to join us. You can find the link over on polka.wedding.com forward slash podcast or just head to the advertise link on our website as well. 
We're a brand new podcast, as you know, so we would love your ratings, reviews and subscriptions. We're always open to your feedback and we'd love to hear who you are and what you love. Catch you next time.